This was our first house. It was an old one that needed a lot of work, but young Tommy and Diane still had lofty ideas. We decided to remove a useless closet-sized library to make one master den, which required us tearing out the first story wall. Our hammers went right through the wallpapered plaster and wood on the first swing, through a wall that looked like it was slapped up in a hurry. Sitting in the center of the bare room, on a stick-legged table, was a bright brass box, a small polished wheel that reminded me of an old-fashioned film reel and ticking and moving finger lever. It was a telegraph from the 19th century, its single cord cut and dangling halfway down the table in the dusty and paintless room. The telegraph was clacking out a message. My wife and I and technicians and scientists by trade and nature, we both concluded that the sensitive equipment was picking up a strong electromagnetic field, which could explain why our digital cameras were bricked after getting close enough to take a shot. My wife and I tried to move the telegraph to find that it was fused to the table, and the table might as well have been made from titanium rooted to the core of the earth. My wife pointed to the floor under the table. Handmade tiles, decades, maybe centuries older than the house. We decided to explore the 10 by 10 room, where we found some of the foundation showing through the tiles and wood. It wasn't concrete. It was kind of ornately carved spirals and interlocking fractals within the granite. My wife calculated that 15,000 years were needed to erode the block. I believed her. We went downtown to do some research. Most of the other property records took up a tenth of a three ring binder at the Department of Development. Ours had its own three inch binder. It was once the first structure in town, a bank, which spawned the rest of the town around it in 1880. The bank had a bar, school, theatre, restaurant, feed store, and a dozen other entities before becoming our own home. No matter the structure, there was always one room that never changed. The room in the centre of the building, which would remain constant as we flipped through the hundreds of other layout drawings. The telegraph room never moved. Diane suggested that we learn Morse code to at least determine if it's code, gibberish, or a clear message. Learning the archaic code was harder than it looked, and required three nights of poring over guides and training our ears to distinguish the faintly different sounds. On the fourth night, I began to hear a pattern. It allowed me enough time to find the letters and space them out properly. My wife began to check and confirm what I got from the machine. It said, Hello, Tom and Diane. My wife begged me to get out with her, fearing that the people who built around it died, fearing that's why the house was so cheap and why it was walled in the first place. I tried to remain calm, scientific, and said, I had to remain to test it. She slapped the glasses right off my face and told me she would rip my arm out of my goddamn socket if I didn't leave with her. It was a threat in spirit only. She was a third of my size, but she was desperate. It was our first fight, and the last time we ever spoke or touched. She left me with this machine. This wondrous machine that wanted... A simple favour done for it. I tapped back that I wanted tomorrow's six Powerball numbers and promised to do what it wanted, for me to drain the oil out of a stranger's car if the numbers came up. 3, 8, 11, 21, 33, 38 and 5. I am now in possession of a lottery ticket worth 96 million dollars but just the thought of money has weakened me. I don't even have the courage to cash it. 
The telegraph poked a giant hole in my logical, rational universe. And I live in that peaceful calm before the storm, within the inevitable collapse. Now, I must go, and change this strangest destiny for reasons only the telegraph knows. I don't know what happens after I do. Only the telegraph knows. Only. <laughs>